Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Monopoly Animal Crossing Edition Modern Horizons. The game plays two to four players, takes roughly about 45 minutes to play, and is for ages eight and up. And in the game Monopoly Animal Horizons, you are going to be playing as one of the many villagers in the town. Select your villager, gather their tokens, and of course some bells, and move around trying to gather ingredients as well as resources in order to buy specific items from the shop. If you can acquire seven items from the shop, the game will trigger an ending, all players will go around the board once more, and then you're going to tally up the amount of points you have, and whoever has the most is the winner. It's a pretty simple, straightforward game, relaxing, and not nearly as aggressive as the normal Monopoly game, and in fact, very unsimilar to other Monopoly games as well. Let's show you the game Animal Crossing, how to set it up, and of course, how to play, and then my review. To begin setting up a game of Animal Crossing Monopoly, first take the game board and place it in front of all players. Then take the Chance, Decoration, and Nook Mile cards, shuffle them, and place them down in their three locations. Deal out one Decoration card to each spot in the middle of the board. Set the dice, the bells, and coins in the board area within reach of all players. Then take all the different ingredients, whether they be fossils, or whether they be apples, or fish, or butterflies, and place them down onto their colored spaces. There should be roughly 10 tokens for each of the spaces provided on the board. Gather each of the characters, and select them and place them onto the ghost space. Each of you will be playing one of those characters. For each player playing the game, they're also going to be gathering their player tokens. Gather 10 tokens for each color for each player playing the game, as well as 5 of the different coins, and of course one bell token, and that will be your supply for the rest of the game. Then, go ahead and deal out the 4 different skill cards next to the ghost space. When players cross the ghost space for the first time, they're going to get to choose one of those and utilize that ability for the rest of the game. After that, you're ready to go. Give a player the dice and allow them to roll them and begin their turn. Playing the game Animal Crossing New Horizons Monopoly is very easy. Give the first player the starting die. First is going to be the movement die and of course the resource die. Have them roll both of them at the same time and then move their character the number of pips based on the movement die. Afterwards, you're going to interact with that space and all spaces do something different and unique and benefit your character. Then, choose to sell any of the resource items that you have in your supply based on the item that you rolled on the resource die. Afterwards, give the die to the next player and have them roll, and then they're going to go ahead and roll the die. And of course, they'll move the number of spaces, interact with the space, and then sell resources based on what they rolled. Of course, there's a leaf on here, and if it's a leaf, you can choose any resource you'd like and as many of them as you'd like to sell based on the number of bells associated on the back of those resources. Players will continue the game going around the board until they hit the Browse Nooks Cranny Go Space. When they hit that for the first time, they'll select one of the skill cards, place it in front of them, and use its passive ability for the rest of the game. Additionally, whenever you cross or hit go, you are going to be able to buy from Nook's Cranny, decorations. You'll use your bells to then buy furniture. You can buy up to three every time you pass, and whenever somebody finally gets to seven, that will trigger the ending of the game. Each player will have a chance to continue to go around the entire board, uh, so finishing up their movement across the board, hit that go space, and of course then be able to buy or purchase decorations. Finally, you're going to add up all the value that you have, whether it be from coins and resources, and of course from the decorations that you have, and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. Let's talk about some of the more um, individual spaces on the board. First of all, you have locations. When you hit a location, you're going to take your character token and place it on the board. When you do that, that is going to symbolize as it being your location, and no one else can take that location from you. And whenever somebody lands there, you're going to be able to gather a resource from that location. Additionally, when you land on a location, you'll be able to take one resource from the top of the stack associated with that location. There are also spaces like Dodo Airlines. When you land on a Dodo Airline, you can move from one space uh, to another, the Dodo Airlines space, to any space before another Dodo Airlines. So for instance, if Pink were to go to Dodo Airlines, she could then choose to go to this other pink space and gather a fossil. Also, of course, she'll be able to place one of her tokens on that area and it will now be claimed as her own location. 
Uh, another space is the uh, Nook Miles space. Whenever you uh, land on one of those spaces, you'll draw a card, put it face up in front of you, and it's going to be an objective you're going to try and complete. Usually it will require some type of resources or give you some type of bonus, and when you finish it, you'll flip it face down, and hopefully it'll give you some points at the end of the game. Another thing you can choose to land on, or land on just individually, is a chance space. The chance spaces are question marks, and when you draw them, something unique will happen, just like in the regular Monopoly. For instance, you might have to pay the Golden Eagle two bells. Other times, they might give you five. It just depends on the card that you draw, and it's always going to be random. Uh, another space you can land on is, of course, the old go to jail. When you do that, you'll have to uh, basically go to the jail area, and you'll roll dice uh, on your turn one time, every turn until you hit a six. The other way, of course, you can get out is if you roll three times or if you decide to pay five bells instead of rolling the dice. Then, of course, there's the ghost space. The ghost space will allow you to gather any of the decorations you'd like to buy, and you don't have to buy any if you don't want, or you can buy all of them if you'd like. And uh, the ones that you buy are going to give you victory points at the end of the game. And once you hit seven, that will trigger the ending of the game. So you have to kind of decide what you want to buy based on how much money you have and how much you would like to uh, basically utilize in the game. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Go around, gather properties, gather resources on those properties, and hope other players land on your properties to then give you a bonus or benefit from that area. Buy and sell different items, and of course, go ahead and roll on the Chance and the Nook Miles location to give you either instant gratification or an objective to reach that will give you points as well. Whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. I think you get it now. Let's give you my review. Animal Crossing New Horizons Monopoly is a very straightforward and simple game. In fact, it is much more simple than the original Monopoly. And of course, much more laid back. Just like the game Animal Crossing on, well, what I played, Switch, uh, which I still own and I have played uh, entirely too much of. This game is all about landing on locations, trying to place your tokens on those locations, netting resources from them, and then gaining benefits when other players land there as well. You also want to buy the best decorations possible. You might not always want to buy all of them, and yes, you can to try and trigger the end of the game early, but sometimes it might not be worth it if you buy three tens and another player buys uh, two 25s and a 30. So you have to kind of decide what resources uh, you want to spend, when you want to spend them on your turn, because rolling this resource die is the only thing that's going to allow you to net uh, selling resources, other than sometimes with these Nook Mile cards giving you a benefit as well. Um, monopolies don't necessarily matter all that much in this game. It's more about where you go, visiting the different locations, and acquiring their benefits when other players land on them. You can, of course, trade in this game as well, uh, whether it be certain resources and whatnot, uh, but typically you're not going to see yourself doing that all that much. You're also not going to be getting as angry, and of course the game is going to be a lot shorter. Think of the game... Um, the Mario Gamer, right? It's a much quicker version of Monopoly. If you haven't played Mario Gamer, that's another excellent Monopoly game. In fact, probably my favorite in the series of new Monopoly games they have made in the last couple of years here. The quality of the components. Well, first of all, I love the quality of the miniatures. The little villagers are excellent and my favorite part of the game. These are things I'm going to keep forever, even if I don't end up keeping the game uh, for some reason or another, because they are high quality, beautiful, and remind me of my adventures and nostalgia in Animal Crossing New Horizons. The board itself is fine, and most of the components are based on the original style Monopoly game. The tokens are thinner, the cards are thinner, and if you've played Monopoly or own any of the other more recent Monopoly games, then you probably imagine the type of quality these components are going to be in. For me, they are a solid fine, not too great, not too bad either, but not something I'm going to ring home about, So, just so you're aware. Uh, another thing with this game too is you're going to have to place out all these resources on the game. There's a ton of different resources that will have to go on each of the locations. So the setup is a long setup. And we would suggest you actually buy some baggies for this game so that you can have a ba uh, different baggies for each of the different resources in each of the different locations. Or at least color coded so that you don't put them all in the same bag and have to spend 20 minutes putting the game together. Usually Game of Monopoly is much quicker to set up. This one is probably the longest setup for a Monopoly game I have played so far. I love the player passive powers. This is a really unique twist to the game and a much needed one as well. It gives you a little bit of agency and change in the game and makes your characters feel different than the other characters and kind of gives you a goal. The, uh, of course, the Miles cards as well are really cool. You can choose to kind of strategize a little more than you would think. After playing the first game and basically getting to the end first doesn't guarantee you anything. It's all about what you buy and when you buy it. 
What I would like to see though, however, is to be able to select cards, remove them, and put out new ones uh, because maybe you don't like those or they're, they're too low of cost. Or you can pay to remove a card and put a new one out. So that way, you're not stuck with getting mm, three different decorations that are worth almost nothing and then not even want to buy any decorations because when you get to the go space, they are not of value that you need in order to win the game, but they could end the game and thusly make you lose the game. So some way to remove these guys from the field and put new ones out would be great. Even if you have to pay for it, I'd be fine with. Because collecting currency in this game is easy and feels flowy and easy, relaxing. It's not something that I'm always worried about. Yeah, I might not have the most and I might not be able to buy everything I want, but I'm always able to buy something or get something new or get some type of advantage. It's never going to be bankrupting me. You're never going to bankrupt yourself in this game. And even if you can't pay for something, it's not going to kick you out of the game, which is nice, especially because it's already a quick game, which is another devil benefit. And this also just keeps the game going and is much better for younger players. If you are a fan of Animal Crossing, and you like a little twist on Monopoly, and you want these little characters, this is a game I would suggest you take a look at. If you're not too keen on Monopoly because of the length, this is also not a problem, or of course the aggressive na nature of Monopoly, this is also not an issue. But if you don't like the roll to move aspect, the randomness of the decorations, and of course the setup, it might not be a game for you. Overall, a solid Animal Crossing Monopoly style board game that I would suggest any classical Animal Crossing and Monopoly lover to take a look at. This one will stay in my collection specifically because I love Animal Crossing and I love the miniatures and it's something that I can easily get my little cousins to play. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Animal Crossing New Horizons Monopoly. If you're interested in taking a look at the game, go ahead and hit the link down below in the description. Hasbro sent me a free copy of this game to show you guys, along with some cool swag that my wife stole. <laughs> and thank you Hasbro, we really greatly appreciate it. And we have a couple more of their games to show you as well. One being a party game, and then two more being um, a Monopoly and a life game with some different and unique IPs attached to them. Mario and Mario, I think, but you'll see. Uh, also, thank you guys. Uh, go ahead and check out the Unfiltered Gamer website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Also, don't go ahead, don't forget to also go ahead and take a look at our Patreon. For a dollar a month, you can help support this channel, creating more reviews and videos for board games um, similar to this one here. And of course, you can see us play games like this live every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. Unless the internet oh, not so working, then the next day I'll upload it to YouTube on Monday, so you'll be able to see it there, which I guess can happen because I live in a place that internet's not so great. All right, guys, thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to visiting you on the farm next time.